namaste. Okay, uh, this is going to be a rant, so uh, trigger alert. <laughs> See, in these days, you can talk about sex, you can talk about violence, you can talk about, you know, any kind of crazy politics, huh? and nobody gets upset, you know, it's kind of expected. But if you start talking about the society as a whole, and say all these, you know, politically incorrect things, oh my God, people get triggered all over the place. So if that's you, tune out right now. <laughs> we're going, we're going straight to the bottom of the, of the Marianas Trench here, um, to see the causes of the present situation in society. But what is it? Well, the society is collapsing. Huh? If you have studied empire, like the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, all the way back to the Vedic Empire, or any empire you can find, they all reach a stage where they saturate their supply chain, especially their ecology. They drive their ecology to the point of collapse. Their agriculture fails. Uh, their economy fails, and the whole thing goes away, often in a matter of weeks. Like the Anastasi Indian city, for example, in Arizona. You go there today, and it's just a bunch of ruins, right? The archaeologists found that up, practically up until the day that it collapsed, everything was going along normally. And then suddenly, boom, no food. Everybody left. Those that didn't starve there. So in the same way, societies, when they reach a certain point of corruption, <laughs> a certain point of overreach, uh, overshooting their resources, they turn in on themselves and they get involved in internal conflict until they collapse. And now we have this happening in the whole world. See, if, if Anastasi tribe collapses or, you know, any other tribe here or there or whatever, it doesn't take down the whole planet. But when this culture collapses, it will. When this culture collapses, the whole planet is going to be reduced to savagery and not noble savagery <laughs> either. Uh, it's going to be nasty. A struggle for survival. Now, what has brought us to this point? How could we as a society, a, a global society, have created such bad karma that we're tearing up the very planet that we live on? I mean, it's just the amount of ignorance is just astounding. The, the amount of lack of responsibility and, and just downright evil is, is almost incomprehensible. But, you know, there you have it. Just read the news, right? So, or look around you. You don't need the news. Just look at the people around you, what they're doing and how they're living and so on. So why is it? Well, it's because religious values and religion itself are also collapsing, being driven to collapse. Hmm? And this is the source of tremendous bad karma. I mean religion in the broadest sense, to include not only organized religion, but independent uh, little congregations here and there, and, different spiritual teachings and so on. They're all corrupt because of the influence of the society. I tried to start a, a, an ashram. and Actually, I did start an ashram. I started several. And everything was going along great until one bad actor showed up and basically sank the whole thing. Why? Because he didn't follow religious principles. 
religious principles in the broadest sense means that which tends toward self-realization, that which supports enlightenment, okay? that which serves and cares for the enlightened teachers, because without them we're sunk. See, it, it really gets down to the local level. It gets down to the personal here, because if you don't support the teachers, Huh? They're human beings. They have their own quirks, huh? but they have the knowledge. So if that knowledge goes away, if we find fault with the teachers and harass them, see, that's going to lead to the situation we have today. Now, what's wrong with religion if we look at it huh? the way it is today? Well, first of all, each religion is centered on a particular concept, a particular deity or leader, huh? like Christianity centered on Christ, Jesus Christ, Buddhism centered on Buddha, Gautama Buddha, and so on. Okay, the only exception to that might be Hinduism, but I mean, you can hardly call Hinduism a religion. It's, it's just a name, really, that's applied to a, a hugely diverse uh, very large group of different ideas about spiritual life. And each one of those ideas says, we have the only way, we are the best, and if you follow our path, it'll take you all the way to the real, genuine, one and only enlightenment. Huh? <laughs> but then how come they all disagree with each other? How come if you have uh, less than full faith and commitment in a particular spiritual community, there are a tremendous social costs. Uh, well, let, let me give you a concrete example. In a Buddhist monastery today, or basically any monastery or church or anything like that, the, the head guy is God. The head guy decides everything. Huh? There's no room for any differing opinion. There's no room for discussion. There's no appeal. See, there's no due process, which means there's no justice. Let me give you a very practical example, something I'm dealing with right now. Last time I came to Sri Lanka, I spent some time at a Buddhist monastery, a vihara, a forest monastery, made for meditation. And I haven't, I shared you all that I was there, uh, and I even did some videos and stuff, but then I had to leave. Why? I never discussed it publicly because I was seeing how it was going to resolve. Well, <laughs> this guy came, a visitor, who is very connected through family to some major donors of the monastery. And one day, or actually since the very first meeting with him, he was verbally and emotionally abusive to me. And I tried to bring this up in various ways to the different people involved, uh, especially his brother, who's a, who's a lawyer and should know better. I'm sure he's, he's seen more than his share of abuse cases in a place like Sri Lanka. Nobody did anything. Nobody wants to hear about it. Nobody wants to discuss it. Uh, in a functioning society, if you have a complaint, you can go to some authority or some... Uh, there's some process, huh? There's some way of redress. There's some way to get justice. But in a society where the, the rules of right and wrong and justice depend solely on the opinions of a human being, huh? where there's no process, there's no uh, you know, justice process, then you can't really resolve things. I have not been able to make any progress at all 
in resolving my complaint against this guy. And similar things happened the last time I was in, when I was a monk in Sri Lanka. That's why I left. There's a, there's a blank wall. As soon as you find fault with anybody in the system. Now you might say, well, it happened to you before, so maybe it's just you, right? Huh? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm such a weirdo, right? <laughs> I have such strange ideas of, what, of right and wrong. They don't want to listen to my complaint because I'm off the wall. Hmm? Well, what about that possibility? Well, let's consider my teacher's case, Nyanananda Bhikkhu. Katukurunde Nyanananda Bhikkhu. Very senior, 95 years old. Uh, had a very, very powerful, well-known teacher, and he himself is regarded as a great teacher by thousands of people all over the world. But his whole career, his whole life as a monk, he was harassed politically, kicked out of his monastery even. Huh? The, I mean, they even the family who, who had given the land took it back. This is unheard of. This is totally against Dharma totally against the culture and law of Sri Lanka, but they did it to him. And he wound up living in a, a series of small houses with a, just a few men, which is why I couldn't join him. Yeah. But anyway, he was surrounded at, at the close of his life. He, had, he was surrounded by his enemies who cut off communication with everybody they didn't like, including me, myself. So I couldn't be present there at the time of his disappearance. Uh, I couldn't even come to his funeral ceremony. See, this is the kind of manipulation. And, and I saw it with Prabhupada, the same thing happened. My Adi Guru, my original Diksha or initiation Guru, uh, passed away after a long illness, surrounded by his political and spiritual enemies. And the same thing happened to his guru. Huh? They even, both of them, complained of being poisoned. And Prabhupada was an Ayurvedic pharmacist by training and uh, by his career. He was an expert in the effects of drugs and poisons. And he knew he was being poisoned by his own disciples. I was also betrayed by my own so-called disciples and had to disband my ashrams and so on. Uh, but in all of this, I never did anything wrong. I never did anything non-consensual to anybody. And I kept all my promises. I gave back all the money. Uh, this is well documented. Uh, but I haven't talked about it. I haven't brought it out because it's just one case among probably billions, <laughs> you know, of, of injustice in the name of religion. So what's the problem with these religions? Why are they so narrow? Why are they so sectarian? Huh? Well, because the leaders aren't enlightened. <laughs> if they were, they'd admit the truth that every different way of approaching God is valid for the person who has faith in it and is at a corresponding stage in their personal development. Duh. Like, if you're just starting out, of course you're going to be doing karma yoga, you're going to be doing rituals and prayers and studying dogma and all that stuff and thinking that it's real, you know. That goes on. But who is rightly situated in the karma yoga platform looks up to the people who are more advanced on the bhakti yoga spontaneous love platform on the uh, raja yoga meditation platform and on the jnana yoga realization platform okay but these guys today they don't look up to anybody they're stuck in the lowest stage of spiritual advancement but they don't see anybody as being like a teacher or a mentor to them. They only focused on their narrow little thing, you know, and that's it. So in a society, if religion can't offer justice, 
if religion is not really the residence of truth, uh, if religion is not all embracing, if it's narrow and sectarian, or especially if it's violent, it can't really be called religion at all. Because of lack of religion, the whole society now is suffering from its accumulated bad karma over hundreds and thousands of years. Hmm. Of course, there is no such thing as a society. It's all these individuals and their individual karma, but it all adds up to pretty much the same thing. Uh, that everybody's got so much bad karma coming, they're just out of it. So there's only one hope in this situation. It's to find an enlightened individual and create an individual relationship with that person, a one-on-one -on -one communication with that person. Accept them as a teacher, as a guru, and do whatever you can to support them, to help spread their message and so on, so that as many people as possible get the benefit. Huh? Now, we're not going to start a religion. <laughs> we're not going to start an organization. Uh, but we are going to try to, our best to make it possible for individual people to come and get training. And they may all get the different training depending on their state of advancement. Okay, there is no one, you know, one true path. Well, only in the most general sense, there are these four levels of advancement. Dvaita Vada, Vishishta Dvaita Vada, Vivarta Vada, and Ajatta Vada. And we've talked about that so many times. I'm sure you're sick and tired of hearing about it, but that's the truth. And if your religion doesn't encompass all those stages, it's bogus. But what the religions are doing now is they're calling anybody who's above them on the path as uh, non-believers, as faithless, as as uh, rascals, you see? And actually, of course, they're just projecting their own <laughs> lusty, power-hungry, money-grubbing ways on others, whether it's deserved or, or not. So really, this secret heaven program, uh, which includes all the stages of the sp spiritual path, all the different levels, all the different teachings, all the different methods, wherever you can find them. Huh? This is really the last best hope. And it's not a hope for the society as a whole. It's only a possibility for an individual who is very highly motivated and who has the karmic uh, situation that will allow him to approach this kind of a teaching. Our Prabhupada used to say, <laughs> We are selling diamonds. When you sell diamonds, huh, it's a very expensive item. You can't expect too many customers. So in the same way, the, the full spiritual path huh, from beginning to end, this is a very expensive item. This is what we're offering. But who can afford it? Huh? Only someone who is fully dedicated to the spiritual path and attaining final enlightenment. Om Tat Sat. Buddha Saranai.